To, to reality turns passion into profit. Okay, so what do I mean by that? You know, you get in your purpose, and you, uh, I think the late Dr. Miles Rowe said that cause a man to find his purpose, and he will never work another day in his life. And it's really a true statement. And so the best thing that you can do, and you might be saying, listen, I don't know what I want to do. I'm not really sure what I like. And you know what? There'll be little inklings. There'll be little droppings, I like to say. And you'll say, you know what? I really enjoyed when I was doing this. Or I really liked when I was here. Finding out if you're extrovert, in introvert. When you're around certain people, who do you get excited when you see? Because God will usually always show you a glimpse of someone that's doing everything that you want to do and you'll be drawn to that person. So many times when there's a drawing there towards a particular personality or a particular person and a particular profession, those are all indicators to let you know, you know what, I want to be like them when I grow up. Who can you say that about? Ask yourself that. When you see somebody doing something, what makes you say, I know I can do it. I can do it. And you know, not that you won't go to school for it, but many times when people are really passionate and they've been called before the foundations of the world to do these things, they can walk into it and not even really have a lot of schooling. And again, I'm a strong proponent for getting your education, but there's nothing like going to the school of the Holy Ghost, okay, where you can learn by him. He will teach you. The Bible says that he will teach you how to profit, and he really will teach you how to profit. So begin to pray and inquire of God. You know, Lord, what is my purpose? What is it that I'm supposed to be doing? Now, teach me how to profit with it, and he'll definitely do that. All right, on today's financial watch, listen to what's going on in our global economy. The IMF Global Economic Growth Forecast Recession in Russia and a slowdown in China will outweigh global benefits of lower oil prices, which is why our gas prices have been so low. The International Monetary Fund has cut its growth forecast for the global economy on the back down as a slowdown in China, looming recession in Russia, and continual weakness in the Eurozone. The Washington-based funds warns that the boost from lower oil prices is being outweighed by a host of negative factors and is now expects global growth to edge up only slightly from 3.3% last year to 3.5% this year. That is down from 3.8% forecast and the 2015 world economic outlook published in October and that's on today's financial watch and we'll be right back after this break Congratulations to the Impact Network and its founders, Apostle Wayne T. and Dr. Beverly Y. Jackson, for now becoming the only African-American founded and operated international Christian TV network, bringing the gospel to Africa, including over 40 countries and 900 million viewers. We salute you. Impact 
Network, and I'm sitting here actually with a very, very, very good friend of our family. We've been knowing them for a long time, and so I'm super excited to interview her. We've got the beautiful Miss April Ripley. Woo! Woo! Now, April is the founder of Premier Image, a successful entrepreneur, and an expert in etiquette and international relations. Come on, somebody. She is literally taking the world by storm, traveling internationally all over. Well, April, welcome to the show. Welcome. I'm excited <laughs> to be here. I'm Thank excited so to much. have you so much today on the show. You know, I love you. I love your parents and Joey and Heather and really just the whole church. I mean, you guys really mean a lot to Ben and I, and we've been close over the years, and I just know we love you guys so much and really appreciate it. But I want to jump right on in here because I know the image plays a huge role in a person's success and actually April you helped me remember we were out to eat maybe about a month ago and I was eating and I was like am I you am I doing this right she's like actually no <laughs> <laughs> I was like you know what? I gotta have you on my show because uh, I know you're gonna be able to help me out with some things here but I know it, it plays a huge role and I know that you wear many hats women of many talents April tell me growing up I just want to know was image and etiquette something that your parents enforced in you or was it just like a natural gift and talent that you had? Well, that's a good question, Jewel. I tell you, I'm really excited. First, I'm so excited to be here. I am Yay. so excited to see your vision coming to pass live. Yes. And again, you and your family, Dr. Ben, entire family, and how much you do so much to help others to grow and to oh. really see them fulfill their vision and their purpose for God for their life. I'm so excited to be here. Thank I'm you. so excited. I'm Yay. just excited. Right. Okay, so yes, you did ask me a question. So, okay. good question. Actually, growing up, I was a big tomboy. Oh, wow. I mean, climbing trees, you know, just, I was a tomboy. And my mom had a friend who mm -hmm. said, um, you know, maybe you should think about cotillion. And I went to cotillion, and I was like, okay, what is this all about, you know? <laughs> um, so that was kind of my first taste oh. of proper training and manners. And my parents had taught me you know, how to address persons mm -hmm. and, and things like that, but as far as like formal training. So that was like an elementary school. So it was very interesting, you know. Mm -hmm. um, from that, I went on to college and got involved with event planning mm. and hosting like the different speakers or performance oh, groups wow. that would come in. Mm -hmm. From there, I left college and came back and um, we have a church there in Atlanta. Woo. I started working. I know. Okay, Atlanta, yeah, I got it going on too. <laughs> yeah, I got it going on. I mean, seriously, it's like like presidential oh, yeah the body so of Christ much. shout yeah, out so for so real thank yeah. you so much thank you so much and so from there I started working with events at church um, there were some people who saw me and said you know what we'd love to have you come and work in our corporate events so this this kind of shifted a little bit from you know um, church to now was out in the corporate area mm. and from there I just you know my passion for it grew just wanting to make sure that people were handled properly things were conducted um, in proper order and protocol as we say mm. in, in the business and you know a lot of people think of protocol as like hard fast rules like you must do this and this and they always mm -hmm. have this vision of a, a woman standing over them with a ruler ready to <laughs> smack your hands right but actually we think of protocol as guidelines so mm. and, and of course things have changed just in the last you know decade things have changed with internet and mm -hmm. social uh, more some of them that are changed and so mm -hmm. we purpose to see what those areas are and then to help guide people to properly um, position themselves for success wow. not only professionally but also in their personal lives Wow that is really good okay so now do you believe that every person really has the ability to possess proper etiquette I mean, because I've seen some people I mean I know I'm working on some stuff I see some people <laughs> like honey I don't does it help you know what you know what, <laughs> That's a great question, but actually, if you think about it, everything that we do now, we've learned. Yeah. So absolutely everyone, okay. every age. I work with you know younger persons all the way up to those who don't want me to probably to say what their age are okay, okay. <laughs> on TV. But I say that to say that yes, it's something that you can learn. Wow. I think the first key in anything in learning is number one to realize you know what I need help. Right. To admit that I need help. I want to better myself. I want right. to grow personally. I would love to advance even professionally. Right. And to say please teach me. And that's yeah. the word sometimes it's hard for us to say you know help. That's uh, good. Yeah. That's good. So now let me ask you this do you feel like image 
obviously plays a really vital role in a person's long-term success. But if a person doesn't have impeccable image, does that mean they can't be successful, you think? Where do you think that kind of, what is that you scale? Know, there is a recent survey that says, uh, from Harvard Business Study, and it just says the bottom line is this, that 85% of the reason why people are hired are because of their interpersonal skills. Mm. So I say this to say, think about it, and when I do, I do um, teach at, a, at the college, the largest university in Georgia, largest public school university. Um, a small shout out to UGA, University mm. of Georgia. <laughs> but our business school, Terry College of Business, and so mm. I train um, their, their, their uh, seniors that are coming out as well as persons who are matriculating into the college. And we talk about that. We say, you know what? Oh. You're gonna come out with a degree. Wow. There are gonna be 200 other persons that are gonna come out with the same degree. So what wow. about you is gonna set you apart when you go into interview yeah. in front of that person. So they're not just looking at your, you know, your resume because it's all there. They're looking at how you conduct yourself in the interview, how you're dressed, what things oh, wow. you say, your follow-up, and even a little hint, since we're on TV, I'll tell you this. Yeah. The gatekeepers, we talk about those all the time. Right. Even when you go in for the interview, you think, oh, that's just the person who's signing me in for my appointment. That's a big you deal. Be nice from you pay the attention. Front Are you to listening to this? You no. gotta be nice from the front to the end. To the we'll end. be right back after break to get more information. Right. One day, when the glory comes, it will be ours. Dr. King, what's your next move? In March, from Selma to Montgomery. Selma is loud for every man, woman, and child. We will not wait any longer. In front of the crowd. My eyes have seen the glory. Network, and I'm sitting here with our good friend April Ripley, the founder of Premier Image. Now, April, we got to get back here because you said the gatekeepers. I want you yes. to pick up there because sometimes people don't understand the, the how important a gatekeeper is. Absolutely. So I was sharing, started to tell the story of a gentleman that was going in for an interview, and he went to the desk and he checked in. Well, lo and behold, he didn't realize afterwards that this person who was keeping was actually the daughter of the HR director mm. and they were she was filling in because an employee was out ill so he wasn't very nice and accommodating towards her and later found that out in his review um, you know he kept calling the company back you know they're like oh you know don't call us we'll call you right we always hear mm -hmm. that and so he finally just was like okay tell me why I hadn't heard from you he kept calling and calling and the guy said you were disrespectful to my daughter it's like shocker. So I say that to say you never know right. who you're talking to. Yeah. You never know who it is, but you should be. And we teach that, you know, yeah. you know, in manners, in etiquette. We talk about being considerate, being right. honest, and uh, just being respectful to everyone, right. mean, regardless of their age, regardless yeah. of whether you think they look a certain way or not. Right. But respect is very, very high, and we teach that. And when right. you're respectful to persons, people respect you back, and it opens Absolutely. so many doors. Yeah. And there's a and, great and I, and I think that's so important because I think I would love to see your curriculum in schools to be quite honest with you because I feel like we're raising a generation of young people that are not getting this type of you know social skills interpersonal skills etiquette you know what I mean it's I mean we, we of course live in a very informal culture which I think that's okay to a point right. but our children and the teens and the next generation have to know because a lot of them will be kept out of the corporate workplace if they don't have some of these basics which brings me to your book April I love this. Uh, the calling yeah. card of business. By the way, beautiful picture. Thank okay. you. Yes, girl, you are fine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and April is single for now. For now. <laughs> but the calling card of business. Success from the inside out. Talk a little bit about your book and who is this book for? This book is for every person, male, female, every age. Um, I wrote this book because a lot of people would ask me, you know, what are some of the things that you found that have you believe that have made you successful to this point? Mm -hmm. And I always say that success is not a journey. So I'm not saying that I've arrived, mm -hmm. but what I am saying is where I am now in my life, I've learned a lot um, mm -hmm. through observation, but just being blessed by incredible mentors in yeah. my life. Yeah. Um, the forward of, of my book was written by the late Dr. Miles Monroe, who was a, a wow. great mentor, and you know, my parents have been 
been phenomenal mentors. Yeah. I mean, you've been phenomenal mentor. What you're oh. doing with women, um, Dr. Ben, just in the whole year, your show, like everything. So people say, well, I can't physically touch this person. How can mm -hmm. they mentor? You can, you know, read books. Um, there's audio. YouTube now has opened up so mm. many things. Mm. And the World Wide Web is incredible for yeah. knowledge. But I would say this book is for anyone who says, you know what? What is it that I'm missing? I feel like I get so far, and then mm -hmm. there's something that's keeping me from going past the finish line. Right. And so I wrote this with some traits that I observed from my mentors, things that wow. they taught me. Wow. Um, you'll read stories in there, uh, some good, bad, and the ugly. Okay. But I think that's important to read yeah. because people really want to know, okay, yeah, I see you here now, but tell me some hard knock things. Right. I'm going through some things. Did you go through that? Absolutely. How did you come out? What were some things that you, you that you used or you knew yeah. to help to bring you out? That's really, really, really good. So. Because of social media, it is much easier for the average business person to make connections, have conversation, and even conduct business worldwide. I know that international relations is one of your specialties. What are some of the things that we should keep in mind when attempting to conduct business internationally? Yes, so there are a lot of things that are a little bit different. You know, we're, we're here in, in America, and we've been brought up in a culture Obviously, that's an American culture. Um, you have to realize that the way we do business is different than the way other countries do business. Mm. Um, we uh, there are a lot of countries, and, and we have things like time difference. So you know, where we like to be on time, some cultures aren't. Mm. I had a client that was going to South America, and it's not a negative thing, mm -hmm. but they don't really start on time. So if you have an appointment at one o'clock, and you mm. think, oh well, you know, if I was in you know Nashville, my appointment at, at 12:55, I better be there, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you might go to South America, and that appointment doesn't start to two o'clock mm. and you're sitting there going okay what happened well they're on a different time their culture is different mm. you know they're very relational and those are things you need to know so there's things like relational mm. uh, time how to do business Good. and also you know the importance of knowing someone on the ground so we talk about a lot of that so I do have clients that travel they speak or they're going wow. into business and so I do briefings for them um, culturally for the country as well as how they do business because sometimes they connect Mm -hmm. And sometimes they don't. They like to keep wow. it separate, and you better know before you get there. Gotcha. Okay, so now we're going <laughs> to talk about me. Okay, because you helped me in a ladder over eating at the table. We were at the, we're at the restaurant because, you know, I'm 5'11. I've got these long legs. So my producers are always like, okay, Jewel, you're sitting. The way you're sitting, and your le <laughs> my legs are so long. So tell me what would be the proper way for me to sit. Because, you know, of course, usually I have on like yeah. a skirt. So I try to keep, you know, my legs together yeah. with anything. But what tips would you tell me well, in the terms easiest of way is to cross your ankles. So if you're okay. noticing me now, I have my ankles crossed, and you can kind of tuck your legs to the side. <laughs> I just like cross it. Like that? That's the quickest way because you always, the keep, you always want to keep the knees closed. Okay. okay. Producers, does this That's look right? Like, you want to keep the knees okay, closed. Okay. You can do it here, okay. and you can watch. And you know, sometimes people cross their legs, but then I'm like, okay, let's see how the length of your dress is and all that. So I'll brief them depending on what they're wearing. But okay. the safest bet, ladies, okay. always. Okay. Those ankles cross, and you just kind of tuck your legs over to, to left the side or right side, whichever is more comfortable. Okay. for you depending on how you're sitting in the chair. Okay. And you're good to go. Okay, good. Yeah. So I'm doing all right. You're doing great. Okay, great. Oh, yeah. And you look fabulous. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Great. Okay, so April, tell me, who are some of your clients? Oh, wow. I've had, I've done classes, large groups. I told you I do work with a business college there in Georgia. I've done um, conventions, speeches for... Wow, small business government, wow. um, training even in elementary schools. I've done some private consulting because sometimes really? people are like, you know, I don't know if I want to go into class and people don't know. <laughs> because maybe they're already yeah. in a profession where they've done yeah. well, you yeah. know, so their talents have gotten them yeah. to a place. But now they're wanting to broaden their horizons and they and realize go to the next things. level. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I think we've talked about you doing that with our family. I could, we need yeah. an etiquette class, and so that's and something And I need to set the record, though. Yeah. So when, when you were saying that I, was, you asked me that, only people ask me. I'm, you know, we were out just kind yeah. of dining casually. So I'm not right. going to be like, okay, do we need to do this, do that. And I don't do that. I'm respectful of people. Right, right. If you ask me, and I would probably tell you <laughs> gingerly, too. I'd be like, well, well, you know, we can talk about it later. Because I don't even right. feel uncomfortable. Okay, you know, right, you know I mean? exactly. But, but she was a sweetheart, absolutely. That's so good. <laughs> okay, so now, April, we have a game called What Would You Do? Okay? Uh -oh. okay. And so, because I'm sure people are watching, like I am, and wanting to improve and broaden. You know what I mean? As a businesswoman, we're always learning and wanting to get better. Mm -hmm. So this is a question from a viewer that wrote in. Carla from New York City is a 30-year-old successful single with a high-powered job and great education. She's well-traveled and enjoys volunteering in her community. The only problem is she's frustrated because she seems to only attract men without jobs. Oh, Lord Jesus.
Jesus, help God. <laughs> help the Lord. She, fr they, I mean, they fresh out of prison. Baby daddies to multiple women. Oh, Lord, Carla, we gonna help. And she's wanting to change her appearance in order to attract a more high caliber man. So if you were Carla, mm -hmm. what would you do? Let's see, Carla. Well, she's already doing well in her profession, obviously. Mm -hmm. I would encourage her to become part of organizations and associations that are related to her field. Gosh. You know, a lot of times after work, they have these mixers mm. and it's happy hour, you know, and people are like, well, I don't want to go because I don't drink. Go anyway, enjoy your water, your ginger ale, your Sprite. So good. But you need to get around people because this networking is really, really important. And I right. think um, to advance as part of it because, you know, relationships move things along in a right. negative way or or not negative mm -hmm. so I should say in a positive way or, or a negative way and mm -hmm. so I think it's important that she gets around like-minded persons right you know different events that her job might sponsor I know sometimes mm -hmm. um, I had a client that said well you know I'm not really into picnics mm -hmm. the company was having a picnic I don't mm -hmm. want to go it's dusty and all these little kids uh. I said your company is having a picnic yeah you need to be there Wow. She's like, well, I don't think like, you know, the bosses and the people are going to be there. And sure enough, she went mm. and they were there. Wow. So we talked about what to wear and everything. Yeah. And of course, there's different food at a picnic. So that's that's a whole another segment. But yeah. I shared with her it's important. She says, you know what? I'm so glad you did because she actually got to meet a supervisor two levels up connected. Wow. And a few months later was considered for a position wow. for a new division they wanted to create. So I say to wow. say you don't always know, but just kind of stepping out there okay. and being willing to do that. So I would encourage right. you to do that. You know, it might be an industry if she's in tech industry. Industry, mm -hmm. There's definitely associations around her. Just, you know, networking. That's yeah. what she needs to do. Get around people that at least are going where she's going. Right. And, and not where she doesn't want to go. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. And and do you, is there any part of your, your etiquette training? Because I'm thinking with Carla, I'm wondering if Carla's friends also have the same issues. Do you talk about that at we all? We do talk about that. We talk about that in relationships. A little bit about that is in the book as well. Okay. Um, but I give more detail when I train. And okay. again, because well, the way I start is we always do a consultation, such okay. as a one-on-one -on -one okay. first. Like some of the questions that, that you just said about Carla, right. I would look at that and I would say, you know, where you want to go, we'll do a little bit of assessment, mm -hmm. and then some practical steps to get her to where she wants to go, what she has visioned for her, for her life. Now, do you give people homework? I do. So Ooh. it depends, again, all this is like for consulting. So if I am with a client and I think, okay, we're going to need a little bit more work here. Gotcha. Then we'll do that. I even had clients that I took to a networking event with me. I trained them in how to network at an event. Mm -hmm. And so we practically went through, I attended with them and I and walked them through. I was like, okay, I'm going to step in. There's some little pointers and things like that. So mm. all my secret sauce, <laughs> I, I will talk about a little bit. Like but, 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 but I took them through. So it just okay. depends on who the client is. I know it's mm -hmm. a big, I even had a doctor who sat through one of my longer courses oh. um, and sent me back and says, you know what, thank you so much because he went to a medical convention mm -hmm. and he said, everything that you taught, I had to use. Oh, that is so good. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, I felt like a bull in the china cabinet. His wife was like, yes, I felt that way too. I was, I was right along with you going, no, honey, don't do that, you know. Right. And But but I think it's great. And those testimonies really encourage me Encourage. because I feel like, thank you because right. I'm helping someone else Absolutely. to be successful and that's yeah. a joy. Absolutely. So Carla might need to really reach out to you. Yes, Carla, please she, reach out yeah, to me. Yeah. Information's, yeah. Uh, I know Because you travel. I travel everywhere. So, <laughs> so tell me real quick, you could do a one-on-one -on -one, one time or what's like the shortest course and what's the longest course? It, it, it really depends. So I have okay. briefings, I have seminars, and then it depends. So like some companies will hire me to do a consecutive classes based on what they see or issues, and I meet with them first, usually HR persons, because those are the people who are hands-on with the people and are like, you know, mm -hmm. and I will meet with them, and we just assess it. It just depends, because there's gotcha. a lot of different things when we talk about protocol. Oh, okay. So we need to assess where you are now, Right. where do you want to go? Yeah, okay. okay. We're standing in between that. Right. And so that's why it's never clear cut and that's people say what so that's what a consultant does though yeah you know we, we meet with you our goal is to help you to right. achieve what you want um the tag nine for my company is called be exceptional so we want you to be yeah. exceptional not just professionally but also personally because we want you to build that foundation right. that will cause you to be successful whether you you know working for this job 10 years you decide to launch out to be an entrepreneur yeah um you know we want that's you to good. be successful and it comes from you that's good so you pretty much will do an assessment with them to find out 
you know, where you are, where you want to be. Absolutely. And it may be one of those things where you can do a day, maybe a week, maybe months, yeah. and then maybe annually. Because Absolutely. I think some of these things, we have to be freshened up. You know, it's just like we go to leadership conferences every year because even though we went last year, there's some things that we need to have freshened up. So Absolutely. I think they need to reach out to you, and especially Carla, girl. Yes, Carla, but, yeah, wherever and, you are, Carla. <laughs> and thanks for helping me get my guests oh, legs together and so all that sweet. stuff. But listen, guys, this has been so good. And I want to thank you thank so much you for coming too. on. I don't take it for granted. You and mom, I know, are flying all over the place. I think you guys just left Dallas. Now you're here. <laughs> and probably who knows what nation you're going to be in next. Oh, okay. So, no, I love you. And thank, thank you, you so much, much for coming I love on. You Absolutely. Thank you for so, listen, I hope you took good notes. We'll be right back after this. Impact is Impact. 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 social. Impact. Impact is enduring. Laying a foundation generations to come, imparting principles, and setting standards that persevere, providing education, giving motivation, and inspiring imagination, sowing seeds of courage, self-worth, and significance. The Impact Network, for the spirit, soul, and body. Impact is yours. Impact is Impact. Impact. social. Impact is generous, going beyond and giving beyond, reaching those in need, and taking action, caring for those who cannot care for themselves, with ready hearts and open hands serving, partnering with those ready to make a difference. The Impact Network, for the spirit, soul, and body. Impact is yours. Impact is Impact is ready, ready to face a nation's problems, ready to conquer, ready to fix, ready to heal, ready to educate, ready to change, ready to fight, ready to work, ready to illuminate, ready to impact this world. Welcome back to the Jewel Tankard Show. Listen, now it's time for Reality Watch. What do we have today? Let's talk Married at First Sight. Remember that reality show? Season two of the hit reality show, Married at First Sight, is well underway on the FYI Network. This show, which is actually a social experiment, it follows three couples each season that marry someone that they meet for the first time at the altar. So that means they don't, they don't meet them before, they meet them one time and they get married. Now you know, that's, come on now. After six weeks, the couples can decide to stay married or get divorced. Last season, two couples stayed married, whereas the couple that had the strongest physical attraction to one another got divorced. Okay, so what does that mean? It means you don't marry somebody just the first time you see them, just like hopefully you're not sleeping with somebody the first time you see them, and really you shouldn't be sleeping with them at all you get mad, but that's another something. Okay, now, but this is what I want to say. You got to make sure you know, when you start dating somebody, you need to be dating somebody with the same core values as you. It needs to be God. It needs to be family. Then your career. I mean, listen, this whole thing about, honey, I want him to be fine. Now, listen, my husband is fine. And I told the Lord I wanted a fine husband and he gave it to me. But I also had to have a fine husband who had some sense. Okay, who loved the Lord like I did, who loved family like I did, and we have the same core values. So even though we may not agree on everything, first of all, we can agree to disagree respectfully. But then in addition to that, we also, um, you know, there's nothing that's been so major because we believe the same thing. So you got to, when you start talking about dating somebody, don't date somebody that you got to fix them all up because they may never get fixed up. And you don't want to have to rain, rain, raise somebody that's grown anyway. Okay? So so don't marry a construction project. All right. Now, until next time, remember, you can have it all. I'll see you right back here on the Jewel Tanker Show. See ya.